Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'd like to begin uh, by reviewing a little bit of recent history. Uh, the challenges, the financial challenges that the state of Illinois faces did not begin during COVID. They're not solely the result of the pandemic that has caused so many challenges and hardships for families and businesses across the state of Illinois. These are long running systemic issues that have plagued our budget for years. The governor in 2019 instructed his agency directors and department heads to identify six and a half percent cuts across all agencies. Uh, he touted that in a press release, advertised that he was asking uh, individuals to do that, and then never followed through with any suggestions. No, none of those suggestions were shared with the legislature uh, or incorporated in the uh, fiscal year 2020 budget. The governor again came back to that same tactic and last fall in 2020 asked agency directors and department heads again to identify 5% in cuts that would be implemented uh, in this budget. But again, no results have come from the, those groups. We've asked time and time again uh, that we'd be given that information and the legislature would be able to consider those options, but none of those suggestions have been shared with us. And so where does that leave us today? Well, it leaves us with a current fiscal year budget that delegated unprecedented levels of authority to the governor who balanced a budget through an unprecedented level of borrowing that the state now has to wrestle with repaying in the upcoming fiscal years. And for the upcoming year's budget, it led the governor to identify a billion dollars in tax increases on businesses and call them loopholes, even though these are the same incentive programs that he himself signed into law and that both Republicans and Democrats in the legislature correctly identified as meaningful tools to make Illinois a more competitive place for new business development, new job creation, and widespread construction and new investment projects. As we consider where Illinois stands today, uh, we must wrestle with the ongoing and long running financial challenges we've dealt with for years, but we also must ask ourselves, what are we doing to make Illinois prepared to reemerge after the pandemic? to be able to compete with a resurgence of growth and investment that'll happen around the country and around the world. Uh, what is Illinois doing to make sure that we're ready and able to capitalize on that growth? It's certainly not going to help Illinois by removing some of the same uh, incentive programs that have led to the highlights of investment of new jobs and new, in, in new uh, projects in Illinois over the last few years. This is a very short-sighted step uh, has been without migration, struggling with lack of competitiveness uh, and struggling with financial problems for years and instead results in the same old playbook of increased taxes, uh, ignore spending realities and kick the can down the road on further reforms. The reality is that Republicans in both the House and the Senate are ready to engage through appropriation committee meetings but we demand transparency from the governor's office, from agency directors and department heads about what realities they've identified in their budget, what options are available, where we can find uh, cost efficiencies and, and uh, spending reductions, and what we can do collaboratively to take steps forward and to make Illinois a more vibrant, more sustainable, and more responsible state going forward. 